But he did not answer even one accusation, so that Pilate was quite amazed. The Gospel according to St. Matthew, chapter 27, verse 14. Jesus had never been slow of speech when he was able to bless the sons of men, but he would not say a single word for himself. Never man spake like this man, and never man was silent like him either. Was this singular silence the index of his perfect self-sacrifice? Did it show that he would not utter a word to stay the slaughter of his sacred person, which he had dedicated as an offering for us? Had he so entirely surrendered himself that he would not interfere in his own behalf, even in the minutest degree, but be bound and slain an unstruggling, uncomplaining victim? Was this silence a type of the defencelessness of sin? Nothing can be said in palliation or excuse of human guilt. And so he who bore its whole weight stood speechless before his judge. Is not patient silence the best reply to a dishonest world? Calm endurance answers some questions infinitely more conclusively than the loftiest eloquence. The best apologists for Christianity in its early days were its masters. The anvil breaks a host of hammers by quietly bearing the blows. Did not the silent Lamb of God furnish us with a grand example of wisdom, where every word was occasion for a new blasphemy? It was the line of duty to afford no fuel for the flames of sin. The ambiguous and the false, the unworthy and the mean, will before long overthrow and confuse themselves, and therefore the true can afford to be quiet and find silence its wisdom. Evidently, our Lord by his silence furnished a remarkable fulfilment of prophecy. A long defence of himself would have been contrary to Isaiah's prediction he is led as a lamb to the slaughter, and as a sheep before her shearers is dumb, so he opened not his mouth. By his quietness he conclusively proved himself to be the true Lamb of God, and as such we salute him this morning. Be with us, Lord Jesus, and in the silence of our hearts let us hear the voice of your love. Amen.